Hey guys. Okay, we are on we are now on 1.5 radicals and rational exponents. So we just covered exponents and the rules with exponents. Now we're going to cover radicals and rash, rational exponents. So a difference between rational exponents and the in, the exponents we were <laughs> we were using before is that rational means like a fraction or a ratio. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and dive into this. So, let's first talk about what is a radical. So, a radical, or let's, I'll give an example. An example of a radical is a square root. Square root. So whenever you see something like this right here, this is a radical. That's a radical. All right. <clears throat> so that's a radical. But it's not just square roots. It's for any root. So whenever there's a cube root. So that's whenever you take a root, a third root like that, or a fourth root. And that's going to look like whenever you have a 4 right there. So an ex so radicals undo exponents pretty much. So in math you have a lot of operations. You have subtraction, right? And the opposite of sorry, you have addition, but then the opposite of addition is subtraction, right? Likewise, you have multiplication. And what undoes multiplication is division. Well, similarly, we have our exponents, and what undoes exponents are radicals. So, like a 2 squared well, is equal to 4, but if you want to work that backwards, well, the square root of 4 is equal to 2, right? So that's what radicals are. Radicals un are the opposite of exponents. Okay. <clears throat> Now, what is a rational? Well, I kind of touched on that at the beginning, but a rational ex well rational a rational is a rational is a number expressed as a uh, fraction or ratio. So, an, an example of a uh, rational is 4 over 5, 1 half, something like that. So now we're talking about rational exponents. So whenever you, last time we just had integer exponents. So we had a, like, squared or a cubed or something like that. Well now, when we're talking about rational exponents, we're going to be talking about a to the 4 over 5 or something like that. And we'll talk about what we do with those. So here are some more rules um, for exponents. So um, it says let n be an, uh, that's supposed to say integer right there, integer, let n be an integer greater than 1 and let a be a real number. <coughs> so. Uh, we're going to be talking about something that looks like this right here. So a to the n. Not a to the n, the nth root of a is what this means right here. So it could be squared root, cubed root, n could be 4, it'd be 4th root, it could be 5, and that would be 5th root, and so on and so forth. So talking about this right here, if n is an odd number, then a has one real and through. So a to the n, if n is odd, this is equal to a to the one over n. Okay? If n is odd. 
So let me come down here to some of the examples that we have right here. So let's find an example where n is odd. So right here, for number 4, n is odd. n is equal to 3. <coughs> so let me show you what this means. So let's go ahead and write this in our form of the nth root. So n th root of a. So let's go ahead and plug in our values. So n is equal to 3, so then we have third root of 27. So what we're trying to do is find a number multiplied by 3, if you multiply it by itself 3 times will give you 27. So that's like an exponent. What number multiplied 3 times is 27? Well, I know 3 times 3 is equal to 9, right? And 9 times by 3 is equal to 27. So 3 times by 3 times by 3 is equal to 27, right? And look at that. <clears throat> this is our nth root. Our third root of 27 is 3. So let me write this over here. I don't know why we went to text. Um, so right here, uh, third root of 27 is equal to 3. And so that's what we do with roots. We're trying to find, so n, uh, the nth root is the number that we're trying to find where you multiply it by itself so many times to get a. So if we multiply n, or 3, 3 times, we'll get 27. <clears throat> so hopefully that makes sense. So if n is odd, though, we're only going to have one answer. You'll see how this can change if n is even. So in this next one, it says if n is even and a is greater than 0, then a has two real nth roots. n it's going to be plus or minus. So if you have n th root of a and <clears throat> n is even and a is greater than 0, then you're going to have plus and minus a 1 over n. So that that's going to be those are going to be equal. So let's go ahead and look at an example down here. See if, if we can find something where n is even and a is greater than 0. Well, we can see right here, for number 3, n is even and a is not a negative number. So, let's go ahead and write this in the, the form that we have, just like that. Plug in our values, so we have 2, 64. So this is saying the square root of 64. So to evaluate this, we want to see <clears throat> um, what number multiplied by itself twice equals 64. Well, this one should be pretty familiar to you, but we know that uh, 8 multiplied by itself will give you 64. But let me go back to what... Um, this says right here, it says if n is even and a is greater than 0, then you will have two real nth roots. You will have plus or minus. So plus or minus 8 will give you 64. So what I mean by this, so if I do 8 squared, that's equal to 64, right? What if I do negative 8 squared? Because a negative times a negative is a positive number, right? So negative 8 times negative 8, it's also equal to 64. So thus we have two real nth roots, and that is plus and minus 8. So we have two answers to, to this right here. Um, so also, whenever you're doing the rest of these, I'm not going to do all of them, make sure you state how many roots there will be and name the indicated nth roots of a. So what that's saying is how many roots? Well, in this case, there will be two. 
why? Because just like right here, n is even, a is greater than zero, and the indicated nth roots are right here. That's our answer, plus and minus eight. As for number four, this one had one because n was odd. Um, <clears throat> and then our nth root was three. All right, let's move on to the next one. If n is even, but a equals zero, then a has one real nth root, such that, so it's saying right there, if a is zero and n is an even number, then this is just equal to zero. Just like that. I don't know if you have any examples like that down here, but that kind of just goes without saying. Zero um, doesn't have any nth roots, right? Because there's nothing multiplied by itself that gives you zero. It's just zero. Zero times zero is zero. Okay, so if n is even and a is less than zero, our last one. So basically, this is saying right here that if a is negative, right? This right here was saying a is positive. A positive number or if a is a negative number. So if n is even and a is a negative number, then a has no real nth root. Okay, let's try and find something down here that kind of shows that. Um, or I'll just have to give you an example. So let's go over 14 right here. So this right here, this is equal to, um, uh, I might have mentioned it up here or, or I didn't, but whenever you have, yeah, I wrote it up here. So the square root of a number is equal to that number raised to the one half. Or if you have a cube root of a number, that's equal to that. You can rewrite uh, radicals as rational exponents right there. So basically, what this is saying is that if you have an nth root of a number, that's equal to you writing it as a rational exponent like this 1 over n. So those are the same. So we can use that right here. We can write this as, so this is the second root, because uh, it's a one-half uh, rational exponent, negative 81. So the square root of negative 81. So up here it says if n is even, our n is even, 2 is even. And it says if a is less than 0, our a is less than 0. It says here that a has no real nth root. So we say does not exist. Now why doesn't it exist though? So again, let's try and think about this. This is trying to ask right here, what number multiplied by itself twice will give you 81? I think 9 times 9 is 81, right? Well, we could also say negative 9 times negative 9 is equal to 81. And then 9 times negative 9 is equal to negative 81. But negative 9 and 9 are two different numbers, right? So you can see here that if n is even, in our case, like 2, you can't find a number multiplied by itself that equals a negative number, right? Because they would have to hold the same sign, like this right here. 9 times 9, those hold the same sign, so that equals 81, because a positive times a positive is a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. So you can't squ uh, square a number and have it 
be a negative number. It just won't work because it has to be positive and positive or negative and negative and in either case that will be a positive number. So hopefully that makes sense. So in this case if you have a even if n is even and a is negative does not exist. But that does not hold true whenever n is odd. If n is odd a can be negative number. So I'll show you that right here saying um, let's do number 10 right here. So n is odd but our a is negative. So what would this be? Excuse me. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and I know 8 multiplied by 8 is 64 and 64 times by 8 is 512 but here's the thing so I know that this will be equal to negative 8 and again our n is odd so that means we have one real n through we're not going to have a plus or a negative and this is because if we do negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8 well a negative times a negative is equal to a positive, right? But then if we have a positive number from these two and we multiply it by negative times by negative, we're going to have another negative number. So remember that if a is negative, n can still be an odd number and you'll have an answer. But if a is negative and your n is positive, that's when you're going to have something that does not exist. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'll let you guys run through these problems and try them yourself, the ones that we didn't do, but I think it's something that you can figure out yourselves, and our homework's going to be similar. You don't have to run through all of these. You can go to the homework and try and figure it out there, but if you want more practice, you can go ahead and, and do these yourselves. For this section, just evaluate the expression, so just solve for that find the number so for this one you're gonna find a number multiplied by itself four times that will give you 625 right that would be its fourth root so on so forth that would be the same for the rest of those okay now we're gonna move on to rewriting <clears throat> we're gonna move on to using more rational exponents okay so let's do a couple of these right here so it says rewrite the expression as a rational exponent in rational exponent form. So we're going to have to use the properties of exponents that we learned last time, right? So right here, we have a fifth root and uh, it's being raised, it's being cubed, right? So if you remember last time, we went over the power of a power. So let's rewrite this though. So I know that the fifth root of 4, we can rewrite this as a rational by saying 4 to the 1 fifth, right? We learned that just above there. Okay, but remember that this is being cubed. Now there's a property that says the power of a power. Uh, if there is a power of a power, then you multiply the exponents. So this is 4 to the 1 over 5 we can rewrite this as that being times by 3. And uh, since it's a uh, rational, being times by a number, we can just cross multiply. So this would be 4 to the 3 over 5. Just like that. So that's how you rewrite an expression in rational exponent form. This is uh, an expression with a rational exponent right there. That's a rational exponent. Let's go to number two. So let's rewrite what we have inside here. So we have negative eight to the one third. And that's being squared. And using the power of a power property, we have negative eight and we can multiply them together. So this is going to be 1 over 3 times 2. So we have negative 8 to the 2 over 3. And then if we go to number 3, 
Let's rewrite that as 15 raised to the 1 over 4 times uh, uh, raised to the seventh power so another power to the power so we're gonna have 15 to the 7 over 4 now this part is just having you undo we're doing the opposite right there right so if we're doing the opposite right here let's rewrite it as a power to the power okay so we have negative 3 with 2 fifths now 2 fifths is the same as 1 over 5 times by 2. And now you can see here that we have, we can work it backwards from a power to the power. And something raised to the 1 fifth, we can rewrite it as a fifth root. So we have a fifth root of negative 3, and that is being squared. So that's in radical form right there. All right, now let's go to this one, number five. So let's rewrite it so that it's being, so that the exponent is being multiplied together. So that means six. Now we can rewrite three over two as one over two being multiplied by three. And we can rewrite six to the one half as the square root of six to the third power, just like that. All right, now for number 12. We're going to rewrite 3 fourths to be 1 over 4 times by 3. And then we're going to rewrite that to be the fourth root of 12. And that's being cubed. All right. So I'll just do one of these. Um, so let's go ahead and do, I'll do two of them. So let's do number 7. So. Let's rewrite it and then let's just solve for it. We're going to evaluate the expression. So this is 32 to the 1 fifth times by 2. And that's equal to the fifth root of 32. And that's being squared right there. Now if we do the fifth root of 32, so what number multiplied by itself 5 times equals 32? Well, that's going to be 2. Again, n is odd, so there's only going to be one possible answer for it. n is odd. And then that's being squared, so that's going to equal 4. And let's do number 8. So let's split this up. So we have negative 4. We're going to say raised to the 1 half times by 3. That's going to be the square root of 64, of negative 64, negative 64, raised to 3. Well, the thing is, n here is even, but a is uh, less than 0, right? So we're taking the square root of a negative number. Well, that has no real nth roots, so it does not exist. There's no real nth roots. So I'll let you guys go through and do the rest of those, but you just have to rewrite a little bit and then evaluate. Last thing that we need to do is a story problem. So you probably see something like this in your homework. So it says the radius of a sphere is given by the equation r equals a divided by 4 pi raised to the 1 half, where a is the surface area of a sphere. The surface area of the sphere is 1,493 square meters. Find the radius. I think I spelled that wrong, radius. Excuse me. Find the radius of the sphere to the nearest tenth of a meter and use 3.14 for pi. So let's write out our equation. So it says r is equal to a over 4 pi. And that's raised to the 1 half power. Now we're going to be using property of exponents here, like we did before. So remember, there is a property of a quotient that said that whenever we have an uh, exponent, that we, we solve it for the top and bottom, the, de the numerator and the denominator. So we say a to the 1 half over 4 pi to the 1 half like that. 
and then again we had a product of an exponent or the product of a power so that this one half would have to be solved for both products right there so 4 4 and pi so let's rewrite this again as a to the one half divided by so that 4 is going to be 4 to the one half times pi to the one half just like that okay now we have to evaluate so what are we solving for again so the surface area of the sphere is 1493 and A is the surface area find the radius so we're trying to find R to the nearest tenth meter so A we know the value of A that is um, so we're just gonna plug right in here we're gonna plug 1493 so we have 1, 4, 9, 3. And I'm going to write this as a radical instead of a rational exponent. So this is a square root. I'm just rewriting that. Because that means square root right there. And then I'm going to write this also as the square root of 4 times the square root of pi. Now if you plug all of this into your calculator and, and make sure you're using your parentheses in the right spot, well, the square root of 1493 is 38.64, and that's being divided by, well, the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of pi. So if you plug all of that into your calculator and do that correctly, that's equal to about 10.9, rounding to the tenth meter. So 10.9 meters that is the radius of our sphere okay so you'll find something like that in your homework just make sure that you're using this equation it's going to give you a value like right here that you're going to have to plug in and then you just have to use the rules of rational exponents and properties of exponents as well as radicals in order to evaluate that's all you got to do for that Email me any questions, let me know if there's anything that didn't make sense. Get started on the homework, and I'll see you guys in class to answer your questions. Thanks, guys.